guys, it's Pastor Steve, and we are on week two of our special series that we are doing from your phone, from your tablet, or maybe a smart TV. But once again, we are in this crazy box that you are watching, and I want to welcome you, whether you are from Calvary Chapel with the Calvary Kids or Club Koinonia, maybe you're with our GPS, which is God's Perfect Servants, but I am just so thrilled. I'm honored to have you watching our class today. Today we're going to pick up where we left off last week with our Gospel Project stories and our lessons. And we're going to be just having a lot of fun this week. So for the next half hour, don't leave your television or phone or tablet or whatever it is. But I'm, again, so glad that you're here but with everything, like our, in our large group, we're going to be doing things just like our large group, only as a small group. You're at home. Maybe, again, you're dressed kind of casual. Again, you might be in your pajamas. But once again, you're seeing Pastor Steve wearing a Superman shirt. This week, I am thrilled to tell you that we have some special guests that will be visiting on our lesson this week. So you're not going to be stuck with just me. I'm so thrilled again about how many of you guys have been posting your verses, showing me what's going on at home. I'm seeing you guys work on your lessons. Oh, it, it is such a blessing to me to have you log in and check in with me. So keep posting your stuff. Post pictures, post videos, whatever you can. I love seeing what you're doing. So let's get to large group right now. And you know one of the things we always do when we start our large group is prayer time. So I'm going to open up in a word of prayer. While you're there with me, how about you pray with me? Maybe sometime, maybe you can post a prayer to, that you are saying to me sometime. I would love again to hear you guys pray, pray for the church, pray for each other, pray for your family. So make sure if you have a prayer that you'd like to share, send that in too. But let's open up in a word of prayer and we'll get started. Dear God, thank you so much that you are with us. We know, again, as the Bible says, if two or more people are together, you are with us. And I know if I'm one person here and there's one person watching, that means there's at least two. So we know that you are with us as a church. So God, thank you for being with us. I ask you to bless the upcoming lesson. Bless each and every person who is watching this. Bless the surprises, and God, I thank you once again that we know that you are in control of everything, and we ask this in Jesus' name, and I always love to say, what? What do we say? Amen. So another thing that we like to do are our pledges. Typically, I ask for a volunteer. Maybe you can volunteer from home. Maybe you can stand up and go, hey, Pastor Steve, I will lead these pledges I always ask, is there anybody who wants to do the American flag? Is there somebody who wants to do the Christian flag? Is there somebody who wants to do the Bible? But because I'm the only one here, I'm going to lead them. But if you're at home, make sure you're not just sitting there watching these pledges. Make sure that you stand up and we know that you're supposed to put your right hand on your heart and do the pledges. That way we know and God knows that we are committing ourselves to him, to reading God's word, and to our country. So let's get started with our pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we're going to be doing the Christian flag, and some of you might not be familiar with this. Some of you may have heard a couple times, but we have the words down at the bottom, so you'll be able to see what they are. But come on, pledge along with me, because what we are pledging now is that we know that God sent his son Jesus, and that we want to commit ourselves and our lives to God. Again, we use our right hand across our heart. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. 
Now the last flag we do, or last thing we pledge to, is the Word of God, the Bible. So we have a pledge for the Bible. What that is, is we are making a pledge before God that we will study God's Word. If you're like me, you love looking through God's Word, you love connecting with God's Word, and we also want to make a commitment to study God's Word. The Bible tells us throughout Scripture that we are to study the Word of God. And so when we do this pledge, again with our right hand on our heart, we are pledging to God that we are going to study His Word. Again, your right hand on your heart. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's Holy Word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path and will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. I love these pledges. I love our commitment to God, our country, and to reading our Bible. All right, it's announcement time. And I only have one announcement that I want to share with you. And that is about the LifeWay Gospel Project app. Now, I'm not trying to make this a commercial, but I'd love for your parents to hear this because it's important that especially while all of us are pretty much trying to stay at home and not going out, we still want to have some fun and watch some cool videos and listen to some great music. And LifeWay has provided that through an app that you can get, your parents can get for you on a tablet. They can have it on their cell phones, but it's the LifeWay app and we can get that and on there, just so you know, are the Gospel Project lessons. All the lessons that we are teaching through, you can find on this LifeWay Gospel Project app. All you have to do is have your parents look it up, have them to go to their cell phone and to the app store, and they can look for LifeWay, and they'll be able to find it. I want you to encourage them. If your parents aren't listening, make sure you bring them in or at least tell them about this app. Say, hey, mom and dad, I'd love to get this app because it'll allow you throughout the week, even when you're not watching this video, it'll allow you to watch the lessons that we're learning and to still sing the songs that we're used to singing in large group. So guys, make sure you let your parents know about this. Hey guys, Batman here. Pastor Steve isn't doing praise and worship and I know that you miss it. So I decided to do worship from the Batcave. I hope you enjoy it. I am going to do a song and I'm going to play through it twice. Once you can learn it. The other time you can sing it with me. I think it's a fun song, and as Batman, when something's fun, it's really fun. The song we're going to do is called, God is so good. Now, understand, as a superhero, I am a good guy, but I am not as good as God. I may be better than Superman, but I'm not as good as God. God is good. Again, I may be better than Superman, but not as good as God. Here's the song. It's called God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good, he's so good to me. Come on, you can sing it now with me. God is so good, that's good. God is so good, that's even better. God is so good, he's so good. I think you sing better than Superman. Let's do it one more time. Ready? God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. That was really awesome. 
thank you for doing worship at the Bat Cave. Remember, God is good. Next, we usually have our missionary offering. And because you're not with us, our missionary offering is going to be a little bit about more about what our missionaries do. And we know, wait a second, okay, I don't know. Is it fair for me to ask you, who are our missionaries? Do you know their names? Do you know where they're from? Man, you're right every single week. A lot of you were saying it last week, and I know you're saying it this week. So yes, it's Alejandro and Lauren T. Paz. They are our missionaries. And do you remember where they live at? Where are they missionaries at? Hmm, you're right on that one too. From Guatemala. Ah, tough question. Do you know the name of their brand new baby? You're right, it's Caroline. And that's the same name as my wife. Matter of fact, we are related to Lauren, and she is my wife's cousin, and my wife's name is Caroline, and both Lauren and my wife, their grandmother's name was Caroline. So it's, it's a, a, a family name. So I just thought I'd give you a little bit of that information. So let's see a little bit about them. As you can see that by the picture, we see that Lauren is able to speak and teach a lot of people in Guatemala, and she loves sharing the Word of God. She, a lot of times, a lot of times, she will actually sit one-on-one -on -one and counsel people about how they can love God more. And maybe somebody comes to them and say, Miss Lauren, I have a problem. I'm not sure what I should do. How can I do that? You know, how can I handle this? And she will share from the Word of God how much God loves them and how they can have a peace about the things in their life because of what God has done for them. Now, Alejandro, we know, we've, we've seen pictures. We've seen pictures. What he does is he helps build homes and he builds stuff. Oh, man, what a handy man he is. But what I love about that is not only does he build all those things, but while he's building them, he's able to give back into his community, into the people around him, and to also share the love of God with them. While he's working, could you imagine? Maybe somebody's working on something and all of a sudden they, they, they hit their hand and they get hurt. And Alejandro can go, listen, let's pray for you right now. Or maybe one of them are also having a problem at home and maybe they're struggling because they don't have a home. And that's why Alejandro is helping build their home. He gets an opportunity to share God with the people of Guatemala through his job. A lot of people need to do that. Matter of fact, your mom and dad, they probably do that when they're at work as well. Share the love of God through the jobs that they have. But we are thankful for Alejandro for what he does in his community. We're also, again, thankful for Miss Lauren and how she shares the Word of God. And as we said, we know that they're in Guatemala. Now, Guatemala is not in the United States. If you can look at our map, when you look at our map, you will see right up here, we are up here in the United States. Okay? They are all the way down here in Guatemala. So they are quite a distance from us. But what is so neat is when we have Jesus, we are the church, and our church unites with their church, and our people as Christians, we unite with them. So we're excited that when we're fellowshipping, they can be fellowshipping. God's church is everyone who calls themselves by the name of Jesus Christ. So we're excited about that as well. We love knowing that in Guatemala, God is moving. In the United States, God is still moving. So I just want to thank you for all the prayers that you have for Lauren and Alejandro. Matter of fact, let's take a moment now and pray for them. Ready? Close your eyes. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for the tea passes and what they mean in ministry, how they have given their lives to serving you because they love you so much. That they are in Guatemala sharing the love you have by sending your son Jesus Christ and they are sharing that love with the people around them. 
God, I ask you to still continue in every moment of Lauren's ministry where she shares the word of God with the people of Guatemala. And God, I ask you to pray, keep Alejandro safe as he's building things for other people that you keep him safe so while he's being safe and working, he's able to share the word of God. God, I thank you so much for the tea passes. I pray for the country of Guatemala. And we all pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've got our memory verse. Do you remember what our memory verse is? Do you remember where it's found? Now keep in mind, I'm going to go over it pretty quickly right now. We're going to come back and review it a little later with a special guest. The verse is John 1, verses 1 and 2. And we know that it says, what? In the beginning was the Word. Now you repeat these things after me, okay? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And if you remember from what we talked about last week, we know what that meant was that Jesus was with God the Father at creation. And he is also part of the Trinity because it is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we know that he is now with God in heaven, waiting and preparing a place for us. It's time for our Bible story. This week... It's a really cool story because now we know that baby Jesus was born, but he's getting old enough to be dedicated at the temple. And that is what his parents, Mary and Joseph, are doing today. They're going to take baby Jesus to the temple to be dedicated. Now you might be thinking, what does the word dedicated mean? What does that mean? Well, maybe when you were a little child, your parents dedicated you at church. Sometimes some churches have what they call dedication services. And what that means, our parents will bring their children up to the front of the church and they'll hold them and the pastor will pray over them and they will pray for the parents. Now the important part is this, is in the dedication, it is the parents, it's the mom and the dad uh, just coming up and saying, we want to raise this child to love God and to study God's Word. It is important for us to know the Word of God and to love Jesus and to have a relationship with Him. We also want that for our child. So we want to raise them properly. And at that point, the pastor will pray for them. But what I love is a lot of times, and I know this happens in our church, that we as a congregation or as a group of people in the church, a lot of the adults will pray as well for that child. Can you imagine that at one time, if you were dedicated in church, that you had a room full of people praying for you? And those people, if you remember, if we're talking about a dedication, the parents are dedicated to training the children. And really, at the same point, those adults who are praying for you are also praying for you to grow up in the Word of God and to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. In a way, they're making a commitment to continue to make sure you grow. Matter of fact, I have seen a lot of the babies that were dedicated come into our children's ministry. And now, we are just getting to act upon the prayers that we've had. We're getting to see them grow in the Word of God. We're getting, them to, see, we're getting to see them study the Word of God, memorize the Word of God. All the things that the parents had wanted us to pray for at that baby dedication, we are now seeing. So our lesson today is going to be about Jesus being dedicated at the temple. Pay close attention. Jesus was dedicated, and we find this in Luke chapter 2. One day, when Jesus was a few weeks old, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. At the temple, Mary and Joseph presented Jesus to the Lord and offered two birds as a sacrifice. Another man was at the temple. His name was Simeon. 
God's spirit was with Simeon, and God had told Simeon that he would not die until he saw the one who would rescue people from their sin. And we recognize that Jesus was to be that coming Messiah that they were looking for. Simeon saw Jesus and picked him up in his arms. Simeon said that Jesus would save God's people, the Israelites, and Jesus would also save people from other nations. A woman named Anna was at the temple too. Anna came up to Simeon, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and she began to thank God. Anna talked about Jesus to people who were waiting for God to keep his promise to send a Savior. She told them the good news. The Savior was here. Mary and Joseph finished dedicating Jesus and making sacrifices to God. Jesus grew up and was strong and healthy. He was wise and God was happy with him. So one of the points we wanted to make about the lesson is we see that Simeon and Anna got to meet Jesus. And they worshipped Jesus because they knew that he was the Messiah. Keep in mind that Simeon and Anna have been hearing all these prophecies from way back, their ancestors, their families. Remember, this was all over 400 years ago that they had been hearing prophecies and then there was that time period of silence and we know John the Baptist is on his way but we know that a Messiah was coming and finally finally at the temple Mary and Joseph bring baby Jesus to the temple and they wind up dedicating him so we see that Jesus was dedicated. We saw that in the story from Luke chapter 2. We also saw that Simeon and Anna worshipped Jesus as the Messiah. Now, what is our Christ connection? Throughout the Old Testament, God promised an arrival of a king who would redeem people. When Jesus arrived, Simeon and Anna knew he was the promised Messiah. Today, we have faith that Jesus is God's Son. We can trust Jesus for our salvation. And like Simeon and Anna, we should share the good news. Do you share the good news about Jesus? Now, we have a special guest who's going to go over our big question, and review our memory verse. Are you ready? Can you guess who our special guest might be? Am I taking too long getting to this special guest? Well, here you go. Hi everybody, Miss Steph here. I am outside enjoying this beautiful weather and I just wanted to come on and say how much I miss my Calvary kids. I miss my discoverers and my adventurers, my trailblazers, and I miss my explorers. I miss you all. And I am hoping, and more importantly, I am praying that we are all back in church really, really soon. But while we are at home, I hope you are practicing your Bible verse, which is John 1, 1 through 2. And it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. John 1, 1 through 2. Let me tell you, that's awesome to me to think that Jesus was always with God from the beginning. And now he lives in our hearts, doesn't he? If you know Jesus, he lives right there in your heart. Now, are you practicing the big question, which is, is Jesus God or is he a human? What is he? Well, as the son of God, Jesus is both fully God and fully human. That's an awesome thought too. Well, let's pray together that we're back at Calvary Kids really, really soon. I'm gonna keep in touch with you and I hope that you are practicing your Bible verse and you know your big question. I'll see you later. Wow, thank you so much. I love when Miss Steph takes part in our large group, but to see her in our box that we've been learning from, that was even more fun. So let's continue to pray for Miss Steph and pray for one another. 
So now it's time for our discussion question. And again, we don't have the video from Pastor Brian, but we, he did give us a question that we can share. And I want to share the question with you and see what your answer might be. Maybe you can post it to me, have your parents text it to me, somehow let me know. But here's our question, and I'll let you know right now, it's not an easy one. What do you think it will be like when Jesus comes back to earth? Now keep in mind, we just got done studying all the way back in the Old Testament about a lot of prophets who are saying, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, and now we know Jesus was here. Matter of fact, our lesson today, we had Simeon and Anna who recognized Jesus as the Messiah. Now keep in mind, back in those days, not everybody knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Matter of fact, most people didn't think that was the Messiah. They looked at him and it was a baby. So they were looking for a conquering king and when Jesus was born, they didn't have all the fanfare that you would have thought for a King Messiah to come in, but he was born in a humble manger to humble parents as a baby. So, we also see in Scripture, as we study, as we move further into the New Testament, we find out that Jesus is going to return again. And the thing is, is as Christians, we can study the Word of God and we can look forward to His coming. Now the thing is this, the next time Jesus Christ comes back, we will know he's coming back because there will be a fanfare of his return. The only thing is, is he's coming in a return to take us up to heaven. Now that's great news for us, so we're excited. But what about those who don't know Jesus? If the person doesn't know Jesus, then Jesus' return could be a very scary thing because Jesus is not returning for them. He's returning for his church, his bride, those who've accepted Jesus Christ. That is why it's important for us to share the word of God. That is why it's important for us to take the gospel into the whole world, to share what we learn at the Gospel Project in your Sunday school, in your classes from your teacher, at home, in reading the Word of God and, and praying to God. Those are the sort of things we need to share with those who don't know Jesus. Because when Jesus comes back, we want all of our friends, family, whoever we know, we want them to know that Jesus Christ can come back and can come back for them. And we know that Jesus can come back for them if they have accepted Jesus into their heart. And we know how that happens. Because we know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him won't die, but they will have everlasting life. That is the good news we can share with our friends. And if you share that with our friends and they accept Jesus into their heart, that when Jesus returns, when Jesus returns, he will be coming not only for you, but for all those who have accepted Jesus Christ. Who knows? Maybe someone that you shared Jesus with will be also going up to heaven and you'll see them up there. So it is great news to know that Jesus is returning as Christians, but we need to also keep in mind for those who don't know Jesus, it could be a scary time and we want to make sure that we continue to share Jesus Christ with them each and every day. Right now, we have something special. Instead of our minute to win it game, we have another game, and we did this last week, and I know a lot of you enjoyed it. We're going to do it again. It's find six in a minute. We're gonna be playing a screen with two pictures, and you have to see if you can find the differences between the two screens. Are you ready? Can you handle this? Maybe you need to ask your parents to come in and help, or maybe challenge them to see if they can find six. The game begins in three, two, one.
I am going to show you how to make a prayer journal or a Jesus journal or a Bible journal or whatever you want to call it. Um, we are going to use this maybe in the next couple of weeks to write down your prayers or write down your memory verses um, or even draw a picture of the story that you heard and what it means to you. Um, if you will get either a notebook if you have a spare notebook or if you don't have a spare notebook that's okay too i'm just using a piece of paper and i'll use several of these maybe and staple them together or um just whatever you want to do you can be creative but today me and ty are going to show you uh, what it looks like to make the cover for your little journal so i'm going to adjust this so you can see what we're doing okay so you can either write your name um, or you can write Bible journal or Jesus journal or whatever you want to put. I am going to write Miss April's Jesus journal. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. You can make it super pretty. You can draw pictures on it. Um, whatever you want your cover to look like, you can be completely creative. Okay, Ty's going to do it with me. So I'm going to say Miss April Jesus Journal How you doing, Ty? Good. Ooh, I like that. Uh oh, that's okay. That's okay. All right, and I'm going to maybe put a sunshine on mine. And maybe put a little cross over here. decorate my letters a little bit. So maybe I'll do that. And a little bit of this. Oh, Ty, that's looking really good. See, should I do a big? Uh, let's do like a hmm. Let's do like a swirly thing down here. How about that? Is that good? All right. So I'm gonna show you what I did. Here's mine. Miss April's Jesus Journal. And then every day, whenever I have a new something to journal, either a Bible verse or I have a little prayer I want to write down, or if I have something I just want to draw um, in response to the story, I can do that and then I'll staple them together when I'm done. And you can always have that. Ty's got his here and he'll finish his uh, in a little bit, but that's what his looks like. So guys, just be creative. Do whatever you want to do, whatever is on your heart to do. Um, and if you want to send me a picture of your super awesome journal cover, that would be so great. You can send it to my email, april at churchotr.com. Or you can have your parents text it to me at 865-293-6369. Or again, you can post it on social media. Your parents can post it on social media if they want to encourage others to do this along with us. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Are you sure you guys want to do this song? I'm not a big fan of it. God's good. 
God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. I don't like it. I don't like it. Stop it. Stop it. It's not good. It is not good. Superman, stop the video. Stop it. It's not funny, Superman. Stop it.